My name is Martin Wade and I'm National Librarian at the National Library of Scotland. And today I've chosen to read from Kane's book, a semi-autobiographical novel by Scotland's own Beat Generation writer, Alexander Trockey. Trockey was born in Glasgow, here in Scotland, in 1925. He lived in Paris for several years, where he edited a literary journal, and then he moved to the United States. After time spent in New Mexico and California as part of the beat scene, he moved to New York City, where he worked shipping stone on Hudson River. This period of his life is chronicled in this novel, Kane's book, and though published in America to great acclaim, uh, the book's semi-autobiographical depiction of sex and heroin um, meant it was pronounced obscene by a magistrate's court when it was published in England. On recreational drug taking, Trocky maintained that we must let the light into what has traditionally been a dark area of human experience. A particularly important comment with today's debate about the legalisation of drugs and drug taking. Today I'd like to read a short extract from the book which shows how Cain, the character, the semi-autobiographical character in this book, had drug taking embedded in his day-to-day -day life. But also, even though he's living far away from home, in New York, he still brings links and reflections of his home life here, back in Scotland. As soon as I stepped across the threshold out of the bright winter sun, it was into a dirty grey and white cabin, which, for a split second, unfamiliar, and a moment later, after my eyes had adjusted themselves to a dimmer light, I sat down at the grey table in front of cigarettes, matches, and the dregs of a cup of coffee. I opened the drawer and found the pill bottle in which I kept my marijuana. I hesitated. It was not that there was anything ominous in the thought of turning on. It was vaguely expressed, a feeling into the possibly profound transition that the drug represented, a transition in space, in time, in consciousness, where there was no in the mind to do what? And what kind of assassin was slung under the belly of a sheep called Nobler? I looked at my pipe for a long time. It was an object over which I had spent some creative hours. Moulded to the bowl was a small piece of desert wood which I had painted in the colours of heather and Scots Glen. It was shaped like an eagle with an extended wing and was hard and intricate lack of surface interesting to close sight and touch. It was a long slim pipe and I should describe the workmanship as primitive Cellini. Read the books, read the banned books and try and join Kane's book.